Welcome to the new Exosus tutorial video. This is an Exosus tutorial to prepare your computer for Windows 11. This video will be in two parts and guides you through the configuration of the Fatality motherboard. Hello everyone. So as I've been told by a few of my friends, others have been having trouble to change their motherboard settings to be compatible with the Windows 11 upgrade from Windows 10, which is free from Microsoft. Um, and I thought I would go through one of the little bit more difficult motherboards here, which is the brother to the AES Rock uh, from Asus uh, series motherboards, and it's called the Fatality X370 Gaming X card. And this is my motherboard, and it's another of my friends who found it almost impossible to change the settings from Windows 11. So I'm going to just guide you through this and show you how this is done on a little bit of a non-mainstream card. Okay, so if you have the card that you see in front of you here, this would be the one that I'm going to go through. And you're going to look specifically for that this is the uh, the AM4 series motherboard that supports up to 32 gigabytes uh, sorry, 64 gigabytes of system memory. And if you're running the one that's 64 gigabytes max and uh, you're running um, AM4 on the socket, just a moment, just gonna find that. Ah, there it is. Then this is it. This is the same motherboard that you have. So with that confirmed, uh, let me begin. This video is going to begin in the BIOS mode, or UEFI if you will, and from UEFI interface it'll go to the Windows uh, GUI to continue with the commands and the PC health check. Uh, and that's how the video is going to uh, continue from here on in. Enjoy. Hello, so here we are on the UEFI screen. Uh, cold boot now on my system after sleeping um, as you know it's delete or F2 for this motherboard to open the UEFI or CMOS for you old-fashioned people like me if you will uh, the modern CMOS is called UEFI so you want to open that and once you're at the main interface here we're going to go through TDM 2.0 and secure boot in that order. So for TDM 2.0 or higher, you want to go to the advanced section. And then you want to go to CPU configuration. This is all the same on AS Rock motherboards, if I'm not mistaken. And here it becomes very different. <clears throat> so by default, I'm just going to tell you what the defaults are before we change anything here. From my notes. So the defaults were cool and quiet enabled, AMD FTPM switch disabled, and SVM mode enabled. So what you want to do on the defaults is you want to click the AMD CPU FTMP, I uh, sorry, TPM, and um, or the disabled there rather, and then click on AMD CPU FTPM. And then the next step, you don't right, go right to secure boot right away. And the reason why is uh, I tried doing that and uh, it didn't work. So you want to go to F10, the keyboard, okay? Save configuration changes and exit and boot into Windows and then check the PC health that, that's in the next part of this video uh, from Microsoft and see if it's got a check mark for T. PM. You can also do that uh, command thing that I told you about, the MSC command and run. Once that's done, you want to restart your computer, open your UEFI interface again, and here we are on the main screen. And next we're going to do secure boot. Now secure boot is a real pain in the neck on this motherboard. It took me over one hour of work to get this running. And I have more than 15 years of experience with IT and that's a life, lifetime for an IT person, uh, one hour. 
problem solving. And I'm going to tell you the exact steps based on my notes so that you don't have to go through this um, experimentation process, if you will. So from the main screen for secure boot, we're going to go to security. And then default, this is not on the user password or user mode, as you would call it, interface. It is on something called the system interface. So what you want to do is you want to click on this area here called set up a password on the default. And then you want to enter a new password, confirm password, and then hit enter. And then that will finally put you into something called user mode, user password installed, which you'll see here. Once that's done, uh, you do not need to restart. You go to... Um, if I remember correctly, you won't need to restart. If this does not appear, restart again to BIOS with F10, as I told you. But otherwise, go right to your secure boot. I keep double-clicking, excuse me, single-click there. And you click single-click on secure boot. And then here it gets very, very tricky. Okay. You want to go to key management. In the beginning here, the secure boot will not exist. It'll be, it won't even, if I remember correctly, it doesn't even exist here. Or it's gray and you can't select. Uh, so go to key management. Again, we're going from defaults here. This is if the uh, motherboard has not been changed since your BIOS update. Uh, you want to install default secure boot keys. So that would be, click there, and it's going to ask you, are you sure you'd like to load them? And you, and you choose yes, and it will load defaults. And this is the default secure boot keys that Windows 11 needs to uh, see that your motherboard supports secure boot. Next, you press the back arrow here. And then you click on this part here where it's going to say disabled secure boot, and you click enabled. And that's it. Then it's the, as you already guessed, the classic F10. Save configuration changes and exit yes. And the system will restart and you'll be in Windows and you can continue my guide here, uh, guide video. The next thing you're going to do is step two in the description below is go into the PC health section. So you're going to go into the PC health program which can be found on Microsoft's website to upgrade to Windows 11. Now we'll open this one here, PC health at a glance. Now I'm, I've just ordered my CPU so it's arriving now so it's not compatible but that's the only one left. So you're going to see then that uh, the different checks here on what's compatible and right now I just have my, my CPU that needs to be upgraded. So you want to make sure that the TPM 2.0 is enabled. Okay, that's the first one that's going to go yellow on this uh, motherboard by default. And then you want to make sure that the PC supports secure boot. And that's not enabled on this card by default. So I'm going to go through that also. I will show the BIOS parts of this video at the end because I'm not going to stop my recording now and, and do all that. It's too much work. I'm going to record my cell phone, add that video clip to the end of this. So you'll see exactly how I do. Um, once you have the TPM 2.0 enabled and the PC Secure Boot enabled from the motherboard, which I will show you, you need to do the following. Now this is very interesting and very simple, if you mind, if you don't mind me saying. It's so easy I almost missed it. Um, I'm just going to clear this clear screen here. Windows 11 requires something very specific, and that is that the C colon drive, the Windows drive, is running on GPT and not MBR, which is the normal format that Windows 10 had installed. So MBR is the default on all Windows 10 drives, right? GPT is required for secure boot to be enabled for some reason. Um, it's a, some sort of security reason um, for Windows 11. So this is what you need to do. Um, 
you can go, and this will be linked in the video, you need to go to this website here, diskpart.com, and the following URL at the end, and then you need to click on what do I need to convert my system disk to GPT. Now this is without losing data, that's why I'm, I have this video, because people think they have to format the C drive and all that, don't do that, you, you won't lose any data. Now what you need to do is you need to open command prompt uh, in admin, okay, I'm going to do that, I'm just going to demo for you, so it's start type CMD control shift and click or right click and run as a make sure it says administrator at the top and you just want to which one was it now that I used just a moment here yeah I just did this you just need to copy the left one here. This is going to default to your C drive without asking you. It's just going to do that. I'm not going to do it again because it'll cause problems with the disk, but once you hit this, what it's going to do is it's going to do two things. One, it's going to tell you, yes, your disk can be converted without any worries at all, meaning no data loss. And number two, it's going to convert it. And it'll do this in one go. Now, if it cannot be converted with data, without data loss, it won't do it. So you're not risking any data loss. Once you hit enter here, it will finish and when it says finished it'll show one or two errors and then everything will be done then you need to exit and then you need to restart your computer okay and once you've done that uh, the secure boot problem of the PC health will go away so this was a yellow for me and it becomes green the PC support secure it does support secure boot now now I have other people telling me that you can go to system information and see the secure boot is there, and that's incorrect because uh, on my on my computer it uh, does not say it's uh, support here, and you can see um, here. Now the reason for this, and I can tell you the technical reason, it's because secure boot state right now is off. When Windows 11 is enabled is installed, I believe this will turn on automatically. So this is just telling you right now it's not running. But it, but it is capable of running according to uh, the PC Health as you see here. So it supports running it.